Today, just about everyone and everything is online, all the time. The internet is like oxygen and electricity. It is everywhere. We live, love, work, and play in a post-digital world, consuming media, using business applications, doing our banking, sharing our documents, making playlists of our favorite artists, Googling for information, tweeting our thoughts. We live in a world where all the information and everything we consume and create is nicely and neatly labeled and stored away in trillions and trillions of terabytes, often in giant data centers in the cloud, and remarkably available anywhere in just a matter of seconds. All this is possible because data is stored on magnetic hard disk drives. The world's first magnetic disk drive filled out a room but could have hardly stored a single song from your music library. Three decades later, the hard disk could store 300 songs. Improving storage technology to add storage capacity was a gigantic challenge. It meant having to develop a hard disk read head that would be sensitive enough to enable increasing of the data density. The solution was found from a completely new field of science, magnetoresistive materials. This field of science was launched in 1988 when European scientists discovered giant magnetoresistance, GMR. Building on this scientific discovery, Stuart Parkin, an English experimental physicist working in the IBM Almaden Research Center in California, went on to create the technological foundation for commercially viable, extremely high capacity magnetic disk drives. The fundamental underlying principle of my research was the notion that one could control the flow of currents of electrons by uh, manipulating the spin of the electron. And in magnetic materials, the current is carried by electrons whose spins are oriented in the same direction as the magnetization. So by creating materials on the atomic scale with distinct magnetic and non-magnetic regions, we could effectively control the flow of these currents of spin-polarized electrons. And this enables us to devise materials whose resistance changes in the presence of magnetic fields. Based on these new magnetoresistive materials, Stuart Parkin invented a dramatically better read head for the hard disk drive. The new GMR read head was able to detect smaller magnetic fields on the hard disk. This enabled higher data density on the disk. And this innovation enabled a tremendous increase in digital storage capacity. The first hard disk drive with GMR read head could store 100,000 songs. After that, the growth in digital storage capacity has been exponential. Unlimited digital storage capacity means even more than you would initially think. And it was about uh, just, uh, f just four or five years ago when a year's supply of all the disk drives at that time in the world could essentially store all the information known to mankind since the beginning of mankind in that time frame. Of course, now we can store much more. The huge expansion of storage capacities has been a determining factor in the big data revolution. With it comes unprecedented opportunities for gathering and analyzing data. You would not usually think of a scientist as impacting uh, social behavior so much, but his pioneering work on the um, uh, magnetoresistive heads has so tremendously increased uh, storage capability that uh, things like Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and all these things are enabled by uh, his, the, his pioneering discoveries. So the type of research that I carried out is now called spintronics. And it's the notion that one can develop interesting new electronic devices, memory and potentially logic devices, by controlling the flow of electrons, not simply their charge, but their spin. But the astonishing thing to me is every year there is some new aspect of spintronics that seems to excite the, uh, the academic world. What is the next chapter of spintronics? What will happen to the hard disk drive? What will happen to the computer? Is that we're coming to the end of the era of silicon electronics. And this uh, silicon electronics is based on some major discoveries 40 years ago, and essentially we've scaled those sizes of those devices in a systematic fashion for 40 years. But now we're approaching uh, levels, the sizes where quantum mechanical phenomena take place, and this means that scaling in the sense that uh, was possible before is no longer possible. So we need to find a new means of computing, and we can find inspiration in particular from the brain, from nature, 
where the brain can carry out a computing operation with a million times less energy than a typical silicon-based computer today. So the notion is, can we uh, devise new types of computing devices that could support new computing architectures that would enable us to build computing devices that think very differently from silicon-based computers, but could enable new types of computing much more energy efficiently, perhaps even a million times less energy to carry out the computations of similar complexity to a silicon-based computer.